Welcome back everybody. So today I have a bit of a, a different video. Um, it's a tech related video and uh, you know, it's an expensive tech related video and you probably can guess what I have uh, in this box. Um, this is easily the most expensive tech related item I have ever purchased. Um, there's a lot of obviously risk involved, but you know, if Apple is to believe or be believed, this is the start of what they call spatial computing. But really, it's a shift in the paradigm in terms of how we use computers, uh, personal devices and things like that. So uh, before we get started, uh, what I wanna do is make this experience as if you were unboxing the video or unboxing the Vision Pro from Apple. Um, I wanna make this as personal as possible and when I get into the video, um, I intend to do a actual review for this, but I would love to get questions. So if you have questions about the Vision Pro, um, anything that you're wondering about the Vision Pro, just put it in comments and I'll do my best to answer those questions in the comments if I get any comments. Uh, but the intent is to make this as if you're unboxing it and then answer any questions that the audience may have. But without further ado, let's get right into it. This came in today, um, UPS delivered it to my house and it was actually um, signature delivery or signature confirmation. Usually um, UPS just leaves it at the doorstep and that is not the case. Obviously with it being as much as it is, I can understand why Apple would prefer a signature confirmation just in case it decides to walk up the doorstep and the owner of the device isn't the person who actually walks off with it. But um, let's just go ahead and start unboxing it. And this is a pretty easy experience. You have a typical Apple packaging experience. You have a little tab um, right here, basically just telling you to rip it open. So let's go ahead and do that. I will say that this box is particularly heavy. Um, it's actually deceptively heavy. So um, I wanna say it kind of weighs probably I don't even know, uh, probably is about five to 10 pounds. Um, I could be overestimating it, but it's, um, so again, deceptively heavy um, for what it is. So again, typical Apple unboxing experience is very good as always. Um, they're always thoughtful. And if, if you watched any of my videos, you know that I'm big on the packaging experience or the marketing experience, whatever you want to call it. I'm really big on just w exactly what off uh, what is offered when sneakers are packaged if they're making making it a, a unique experience and that kind of really started for me from the original iPhone 2G uh, back in 2007 uh, that packaging experience really changed the way I looked at packaging for any device or any product and that's including sneakers and over the years sneakers have gotten more and more sophisticated and upscale or high end in terms of the packaging so here it is Again, gigantic box. Um, you know, this is typical Apple um, from the videos I've watched. I haven't watched any review videos. I wanted to go into this with a fresh perspective. You know, I think when you go into a, a device and you watch a bunch of videos, you have a predetermined outcome of that particular experience. I wanted this to be fresh for me um, just for the sake of argument. I've only had hands on time with a VR experience with the original like Oculus. It wasn't even in the Oculus. It was like Oculus partnering with Samsung where they gave you the goggles. You put the Samsung Galaxy S7 or S8 or something like that in the goggles and you had the VR experience. That experience was cool. You know, got very, very sweaty, got very hot. The phone started to overheat. But again, it was a pretty cool immersive virtual experience and really that was my only experience and that had to be probably almost 10 years ago at this point so again this is my first real experience with any recent vr ar mixed reality so let's go ahead and plop this down on the table so this that thing is humongous um what you can see on the front of the box i wanted to kind of outline once i get the goggles out or the vision pro out i apologize once I get the Vision Pro out, I wanted to kind of um, show all the sensors. They kind of show the sensors on the front of the box. With the original iPhone, when you held it under the sun, you could really see all the sensors that Apple did a great job of hiding. Um, there's a lot of pre you know great things that Apple does when it comes to presentation, including the device itself. The original iPhone had a proximity sensor, had a light sensor, but generally you would see cutouts for those. And on that device, they were able to hide it behind some kind of a tint 
on the front of the glass in the bezel of the phone. Um, again, it was very discreet. You can only really usually see it if you held the phone under the sun. So if you've, so if you've ever unboxed a recent Apple device, an iPhone, which a lot of you probably have, um, they make the packaging and unpackaging experience pretty simple. So you have an arrow, orange arrow just telling you to go ahead and rip it open or rip the packaging open. So let's go ahead and do that. Carefully, $3,700. Let's go ahead and do the other side. I used to really like when MKBHD used to do the cellophane rip from his screen. Um, it's very satisfying when you rip the cellophane or plastic off of the front of the device. All right, so let's go ahead and get this lid off. There we go. A lot of people have been asking how it smells. It smells like uh, cardboard and plastic mixed together. It's a very pleasant smell. Smell test. All right, so now exact, immediately what you're presented with is the actual Vision Pro. Um, so this is it right here, and it's kind of presented in a really nice way, um, kind of like a pedestal kind of thing. Again, Apple, famous for their packaging experience. They spend a lot of time making sure that um, when you spend this kind of money on a device, any device of theirs, because everything's pretty much premium priced, um, you get a very good packaging experience with it. So um, let's go ahead and rip off these tabs. Securing device, securing the device onto the platform. Uh, I'm kind of scared to pick it up to be honest with you considering how much it costs. So immediately picking it up, um, a lot of the weight is centered on the front which you obviously could expect. Um, the front of the device is I don't want to call it heavy, but it's front loaded in terms of weight. That's where all of the computing is happening. You have the M2 chip in there. You have an R2 chip or R1 chip um, in there. You have all the sensors probably have all of the wiring for the spatial audio. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. This is, it looks like a visor or a sleeping mask, but it was going in there to secure the padding. So again, you have a very thick piece of glass. It's molded glass on the front of the device. Right now there's a knit shield on there. The knit shield's obviously meant to be protecting the glass, um, you know, for, as a forewarning for anyone getting this device, if you're waiting for the device or you're waiting to purchase the device, um, I would recommend getting Apple Care. So if you get the device, you don't get Apple Care, you break the front glass, that's $800 or $799, $799 US to replace that front glass. Um, if you get Apple Care, it's $299 to replace that front glass. So it's a good investment. Um, I would obviously recommend it. It's a little bit more expensive than your traditional, but what it comes with is the solo band and that's installed by default. The solo band has these orange and you know me and orange, I, I'm a big fan of like orange hits just like with the Apple Watch Ultra. Um, but you have these orange hits and these cables that are intended to tighten around your head. And this is again, the solo uh, headband. And you use this little crank to basically tighten it or loosen it. But this is it. It's very, very um, high. I mean, it's just premium. I mean, for how much it costs, obviously it should be premium but it's a really cool looking device. Um, not really sure what to expect, but blowing away the expectations I did have. And then when you look inside, you can actually see the lenses and um, how you basically view the displays inside. And um, for anyone wondering, I probably will go over it again in the review, but they are two 4K micro LED displays inside. Um, and it goes up to 100 hertz um, in terms of refresh rate. So high-end, super high-end displays. And from reading or watching um, or listening to the Vergecast, they actually said that the micro LEDs are as small, small as red blood cells, which is kind of insane to think about um, just how small they are. Um, but either way, 
the device is you know a little bit heavier than i thought but it's all all the weight is actually centered on the front now let's keep on going i'm not going to take the lens cap or the front glass cap off just yet um, but it looks like a nightshade like something you would wear to go to sleep with so lifting the platform off that the uh, vision pro was sitting on you have some materials uh, per the usual um, apple experience so one package says vision pro uh, let's see what's in here Alrighty, so it's kind of, it looks like marketing material, but it's also um, instructions on how to make adjustments to the device, how to change your band, how to sync it, how to get started basically. So this is what I will be using to get started for myself, but you know, um, kind of typical Apple experience. Very thoughtful. So again, you have this right here. It just says designed by Apple in California. You got a polishing cloth. So Apple usually charges $19 for their polishing cloth that you could use for any of the devices, but it was intended for the XDR display. Um, so you got the $19 polishing cloth with, from, from what I remember on the unboxing from MK, MKHB, all right, MK, MKBHD, um, it should say Vision Pro somewhere on it. Yeah, so polishing cloth, microfiber, you have Vision Pro embossed on there. Nice little touch, again, thoughtful. Next up, you have the light seal kit. So light seal cushion, I believe, is okay this is the cushion that goes around the eyes so i don't want to necessarily take it off maybe i will so, again you got the little labels to tell you how to take the device out or take whatever it is out of its packaging so this is the light cushion kind of see it right here as well so i believe it is magnetic you can just replace it thoughtful design so divide you know this device is pretty intuitive in terms of its setup the cushioning itself it just seems like regular foam and it's intended to I guess um, ease the amount of weight resting on your face but again if you want a thicker cushion this seems to be a much thicker more more comfy cushion you can slap that on if you want it to next up is you got the dual loop band so in addition to the solo loop which looks much cooler um, than your solo loop or i'm sorry dual loop band um, a lot of people were saying from the reviews i've heard about or the feedback i've heard from instagram was that when you're wear wearing the solo loop band while it looks cool it doesn't really provide a lot of support in terms of the front weighted uh lenses or the front weighted um, goggles, uh, the Vision Pro. So basically when it sits on your face, from what I've heard, it sits heavily on your cheeks and then on your forehead and it creates a lot of you know pressure that over time, when you're wearing it for an hour to two hours, you end up getting a very uncomfortable feeling. So the intent with the dual loop band is to, it provides another strap that goes over top of your head and is intended to relieve the amount of pressure and you know pain that you're feeling on the uh, front of your face. So this is the dual loop band and it's just kind of packaged together like that. I may end up using it depending on how things go with the review process, but it explains how to get it on your, or get it on your headset. But overall, that's what it is. They provide two different bands, um, more so for comfort, knowing that people probably aren't gonna be able to wear that solo loop band as nice as it is for a long period of time. Next up below that is you have the battery. Um, the battery itself is kind of encased in aluminum. I wanna say it's aluminum with the Apple logo embossed in there. Let's go ahead and rip this off.
and you have a braided cable. So Apple from MKBHD's um, unboxing video, Apple doesn't want you to have this too taut, you know, down. I, I'm assuming it would fray the wires and you end up having to replace the wire, but apparently it does come with a little SIM injection hole. So you can use a SIM ejection tool to pop the cable out and replace it if need be. Uh, this is way, or rated at two and a half hours of battery life. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm expecting. I know that Apple rates it at two and a half hours of video playback. So if you're doing anything intense, which at this point, I don't think there's anything intense you could possibly do with this headset. I would really love to, for instance, use Final Cut Pro and edit a video on there. But I don't think that would be exactly easy. Um, I would obviously have a keyboard and mouse attached to it, but either way, let's go ahead and get this battery pack off of here. So again, this is the battery pack. You got the Apple logo embossed in there. And it's made out of aluminum, aluminum. This is a you know high-end battery pack, obviously, braided cable. I thought it was gonna be one of those rubber-coated cables that would fray almost immediately. And then you have a USB-C cable or port right next to the cable. So my assumption is you could possibly attach your USB-C cable and even when the battery pack is low on battery or power, you could use this to continue watching whatever it is that you're watching or you know, browsing the web or doing something productive. Um, but again, this is it, this is the battery pack. This is the part that attaches to the battery pack. Uh, my uh, initial you know, observation is just kind of attaches, twists, and is pretty securely on the Vision Pro from there. In the box, disappointingly, you get a 30 watt brick uh, for this battery, for this particular device and the costs associated with it. To be shipped a little 30 watt you know, charging brick is kind of crazy, but again, it's probably what Apple recommends and it probably caps out at 30 watts if I'm assuming, because I think the iPhones cap out at 19 watts. And then you have the USB-C to USB-C braided cable. This one seems to be a bit thicker um, than your iPhone cable. Uh, so obviously it's probably gonna be a power delivery cable and fast charging and all that good stuff and all that fun stuff. So this is what you get. You get your charging cable, you get your battery brick, which is covered in aluminum or encased in aluminum, um, rated at two and a half hours, 30 watt brick. You get an extra cushion for your face, so it makes it a little bit more uh, comfy when you're wearing it. Again, a lot of the weight is kind of um, situated on the front of the device versus being uh, distributed all throughout the device. I, I know Apple tried their best to distribute the weight, um, and that's probably why they didn't build the battery into the pack itself or build the battery into the Vision Pro because you have a heavy device with all of that, you know, just you know, marvelous engineering and throwing the battery in there while being convenient would have just made the device way too heavy, way too cumbersome to carry around and wear. Um, and the intent is for this, I'm assuming in the beginning, to be entertainment, fun, uh, with some productive qualities. And then as the device gets smaller, lighter, you make it more useful for everybody, uh, more inclusive as well, because at this point, my assumption, my observation, my opinion, is the device, while being very cool, you can kind of you know adjust the immersion, you can kind of turn up the outside world and make it more visible or tune it out and create a whole little space in there. It is a very exclusive device. No one else can share it with you. There is no logins or different profiles for different people. So this is your device, it's a very personal device. But I see the future of this and I, I'm gonna go more over that in the review, but I, I see what Apple is doing. Obviously when Apple launches a product, the intent isn't to launch it and then fail. That obviously the goal is to launch it, support it, build it out, build the developer community, which I know they're at odds with right now, but ultimately make it a device that everybody is gonna to wanna to own and make it more inclusive. Because right now, again, the device is very exclusive. Only one person can enjoy it. 
and you're not going to have an entire family. You know, maybe there are, will be some families, but you're not going to have an entire family buying a $3,500 device at 256 gig gigabytes or topping out at, I believe, $3,700 at one terabyte. So either way, this is the device again. Let's go ahead and pull off the front cover. Oh, so this is, I believe, I forget what they're calling it, but it's like a light filter. It helps with the immersion. Um, I know that when you're wearing virtual uh, virtual reality devices or VR goggles, the problem with those is that if you use your peripherals or you're looking through your peripherals, you can see the actual world or reality outside of it. And that one breaks the immersion, but also kind of creates the nausea that a lot of people feel. But this is also magnetically attached. And then the front, let's go ahead and pull this off. So the inside of it is a microfiber um, to cover the display. Very cool. And the knit, you know, is a very cool material. It's cool feeling. Um, I know that Apple at one point had hired Nike's um, engineers to create their own type of knit, which they en ended up implementing for Apple Watch bands and all that fun stuff. And obviously they continued that knit technology with their solo, uh, solo loop band and so forth and so on. But this is the device. This is curved glass, very reflective, obviously. When you look at it, you can see the sensors. I'm not sure if this is gonna get picked up in the video on my top down, but there's a ton of sensors, obviously, um, everywhere. The idea is that it's capturing everything. There's an outside display to kind of show people your eyes, let them know when you're actually um, looking at them, you know, when you turn down the, or turn up the immersion and you kind of mix in the augmented reality. Um, but in terms of design materials, it's extremely high end. And that's what I would expect. You know, it's a $3,500 device for what I have, a 256 gigabyte um, device, but it's very reminiscent of the AirPods Max. You have these two vents at the top, I'm assuming they look like air vents. So this is basically for cooling. You're wearing the device, the idea is to keep your eyes and your forehead and all that fun stuff cool as possible. I know that in my experiences with VR, you end up heating up pretty well and the device itself gets pretty hot as, you know, in general. But you see the glass, you see the uh, sensors at the bottom and it's just capturing everything. This is really cool. It really is a cool device. Um, you got little speaker grills. I'm not really sure what those are for. Maybe for microphones. I can't imagine that they're speakers and maybe they are because um, they have spatial audio built in. And then they work with your AirPods Pro um, with spatial audio. So it kind of creates that, you know, even deeper immersion. Um, but if you look on the inside, I'm gonna try and get this on the uh, top down camera. The drivers, the speaker drivers are built and they are built into the headband and they're metal, they're high end, just like everything else. But again, this is the device, an extremely beautiful device. Um, it's a marvel of engineering in every sense of the word. I don't say that to be sarcastic. I mean, it has some of the most advanced technology in any device available today. And obviously the price of what it is today isn't going to be the price tomorrow. And by tomorrow, I mean in a few years. The idea is that a lot of people get to try this out. A lot of developers get to see this. And if Apple has its way, which they're gonna invest billions of dollars into making this work and making this a success, just like they did with the Apple Watch. When the Apple Watch launched in 2015, it was announced in 2014, when it, uh, when it actually launched, the device didn't really have a direction. It was intended to be a more personal device. They had Taptic Touch and all that fun stuff. But really, they kind of figured out what the strategy was gonna be about, which was communication, notifications, and exercise health. Um, and they built out from there, you know, invested billions of dollars. And now the Apple Watch is one of the most popular devices in the world. Same thing with the Apple Vision Pro. We're gonna have an Apple Vision Basic or regular, whatever, um, intended for the masses. And it's gonna bring VR and what Apple, Apple has in mind in terms of uh, VR, XR, augmented reality, all that fun stuff, what they intend for the future. And I think the future is productivity on a massive scale where, you know, 
again, you can use this, you know, in an ideal situation to have a um, blown up view of a car engine, kind of similar to Iron Man, where you have a blown up view of a car engine and you can actually just see each, each and every individual part and work on something using that. So that's a far away future. For now, this is what it is, a $3,500 device, very limited in terms of functionality, apps, productivity, and things like that. But again, this is the beginning. We have a long road ahead of us, and I can only imagine where it's gonna go. Um, before we finish off this video, you have a couple buttons. I'm not really sure what this button does. It looks like the button from the Apple Watch right below the crown, because then you have a digital crown on the other side. My initial impression or my initial observations is that it is for immersion so you can kind of immerse your you know immerse yourself in virtual reality or you can kind of take yourself out of the virtual reality but um this is the device in terms of design aesthetic you see a lot of consistencies from other apple devices you have the airpods max that also utilize the digital digital crown and the little button that you know side button that the apple watch uses but in terms of design consistency, you see it. This is Apple DNA all over it. Uh, very meticulously put together, manufactured. The presentation is top notch as always. Um, I look, you know, I'm looking forward to testing this device. I'm super excited to see just how cool the um, eye tracking is. That's one of the things I'm really interested in is eye tracking. It has iris ID or I don't I forget what they're calling it, but the bio, biometric security is using your iris scan, which is really, really cool. Um, spatial audio, audio, watching movies. I really am super interested in watching movies on this, whether it be through Disney Plus or watching my own movie collection on Apple TV. But either way, ask questions. If there's anything you want to know about the device, just leave them in the comments. I really hope that this video does, you know, reach out to everybody. And I really hope that people enjoy this video. I really do hope that people have questions um, and I hope I get to answer them. If there's anything you want to know, leave a comment. If you liked this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching, and you all have a good day.